Hello everyone, thanks for coming outside with me today. I am out here at an undisclosed river location. We have brought the budget boat. I'm here with Nate Fry, aka the budget sportsman. And we are going to be going down this undisclosed river here uh, in Pennsylvania that rhymes with Fusca Flana. And uh, we're gonna be uh, checking out some of the islands that are in the middle of the river. Uh, some of them are quite uh, quite sizable in nature, owned by the game lands. Here's Nate, he's, he's got his boat. We got the kayaks in case the water was too low. Have not had a lot of rain here in PA. Um, this is something that I'm probably not going to be able to hunt. I'm more or less here for moral support for Nate and just kind of out and about and also checking out new stuff. Haven't been in the budget boat yet, so this will be a fun adventure for both of us. Hopefully we can get on some great deer sign. These are all public land islands, all either owned by the Game Commission or the Commonwealth of PA. So it's fair land use and we'll throw the fishing poles in the water here. Well, not the fishing poles, just the fishing lures that are attached to the fishing poles. And uh, we'll just check back in with you from time to time, uh, doing a whole bunch of scouting at the on X app, check everything out, water levels, weather, uh, all the boundaries and so on and so forth. So it's going to be a great day. Stay tuned. And right where we pulled the boat up, uh, we, we've been walking all over, but there's deer tracks right here. I'll give you a look at it. So I don't know. Is that a good sign or not? So fun story. We just pulled up. We just got left the boat ramp there a little bit ago, about 15, 20 minutes ago, putted our way up through here. And uh, we pull up on this point for this island here. See a nice little sandy gravel bar. And uh, there's deer tracks, like, right next to the boat. <laughs> so, fingers crossed. Oh. All right, well, that was brutal. Uh, <laughs> it's really, I couldn't care less. Every time you start Could, recording, I'm like, couldn't care less. Yeah. Well, that was brutal. Uh, we just got out of this, uh, what I'm going to call Fangorn Forest from freaking Lord of the Rings. Uh, we thought we really would be able to get in here and kind of get up, you know, where it kind of peaks in the top and get a little higher elevation and kind of get out of that swamp of your field. But it is so thick in there. Uh, the plant diversity is amazing. The tree diversity is amazing. But the, the understory is just so thick. The canopies, even though these, these trees are ancient, I mean, we're talking several feet in diameter. The tops of them where they're not very big and they're letting a lot of sunlight through to the forest floor and it was really hard to tell on on x how thin the canopy was now they're actually in there i actually can now tell what kind of canopy i want to look for when we hit the rest of these islands today uh, because it's just so thick i mean you can see this wall of vegetation behind me and it looks pretty much like that through the entirety of this block of this island here so this island that we're on right now is one of the bigger ones it's a, a couple hundred acres actually so we're gonna head south here uh, see if uh, we can come across anything that's a little bit better uh, and a little less terrible and um, hopefully we won't drown along the way <laughs> that's the idea I'm gonna make a sandwich though everything everything's bad you can be in the, you can be in the picture it's really okay so everything's going horribly wrong um, we got out to the island, it looked great, the tracks right off the boat, everything's fantastic, and then we got in there, and like I said earlier, it was just an absolute forest. We went down and scouted the southern, southern part of the island where it kind of has like a more inlet to it, and it was just as bad. It's just chest high, head high stuff, trees, I got vines of poison ivy all through them, it's just awful. So we packed up the boat, we're going to head down, what, a couple miles? I don't know. We got to look at the map to figure it out. I guess <laughs> we got to get back on on X <laughs> and look at the uh, look at the maps. But we're thinking we're going to try to hit up one. Might have some, maybe some food plots or some clear cut something on it that the game commission's done. Who knows? We th we were kind of hoping we'd hit these ones up and no one would be on them because they didn't look they had anything done to them. But that's clearly no one is on them. So we'll check back with you soon. Yeah, the access is terrible. So we have moved down about, I don't know, seven, eight miles downstream. What did you say, about seven, eight miles, Nate? Yeah, something, like something like that. that. Seven, eight miles downstream. Oh, that's really blown out. And uh, New Island, this one is much more manicured, if you will. Um, looking on Onyx, it looks like it's a um, almost like a food plot, or maybe they haven't cut like an old field kind of feel. Um, so we'll see how that looks when we get up there. But we're going to jump up here on top of this flat, see what we can see in this field, if it's worth actually looking at when the fall rolls around. Man, it is bright out here. It's like 9,000 degrees too. Well, this is a familiar look, me squinting into a bright light. So we hiked up there and it was amazing. About 200, 250 acres of planted corn on game lands. And Nate and I were just licking our chops. We were making game plans. We went around and followed a two track road that ended up um, going into a big oak flat like on a corner huge monstrous red and white oaks we got really excited 
and we followed that road all the way down to a gravel bar boat ramp <laughs> that the game commission uses and right on either end of that boat ramp which is on the other side of the island we, we did not access from that side on that boat ramp was a sign that said wildlife propagation area no hunting fishing or trapping <laughs> and so we looked it up and uh, sure enough this particular island that we on is part of the waterfowl propagation uh, so it is closed during a lot of the waterfowl times uh, which means during the archery and firearm season for deer it is not open it is open during the late flintlock but we have no desire to be here during the late flintlock season so that is two strikes thankfully you get three before you are out so we're gonna pack up the kayaks here we're gonna ship on down the river uh, get back to the ramp and um, I don't know see if we can find a different spot I mean this is this has been pretty bad so far it's been good it's been good to get out and see all the beautiful scenery and the wonderful mountains here but uh, it's getting a little exhausting so we'll catch you again in a little bit see if we have an update all right so today has been somewhat of a train wreck uh, hang on. somewhat somewhat of a train wreck we are in spot numero tres uh, and this is very similar to the spot we were just at you see it's all corn so this is 100% public land I don't know what the deal is with it though in terms of if it's leased or what um, but this corn stretches as you can see as far as the eye can see almost that way down to that end and then completely all the way down that way a mile and a half well, to the tip of the island from where we're standing so what it was probably or is it the whole the no, whole a mile length? And a half from right here to that tip. Yeah, so we're probably talking a two mile long wooded island, couple hundred. What'd you say, like two seventy? I think two seventy, two hundred seventy acres. So we're talking a boatload of public here. This corn makes up probably ninety percent or more of the actual contiguous acres. So you can't really obviously hunt that. The edges are super thick. We're just looking for maybe some corn uh, that gets jutted into a little finger, maybe some oaks, red and white. Uh, this is it. I mean, this is kind of the last it for today. Uh, really the last, knowing now what we've seen on OnX with the aerial images in particular, um, we now know what islands are bad and what islands are good. And this island's going to be good. The other ones that are left kind of on our docket are just going to be bad. They're going to be too thick. So we're going to try to beat the rain and find a spot for this fall. Okay. All right. So we're running two cameras. Nate's over there filming. Woo! We just went through like 6,000 miles of corn all behind Nate here. Uh, and, and this, the rivers over here, it's just corn. The whole thing's corn. Came from a small wooded finger all the way to this specific island. Saw it on OnX. Think it looks like a more open hardwoods like you can see here. I don't want it to be a biological desert. But we can actually see here for about 40, 50 yards to the timber. This is exactly what we're looking for. There's not much way by way of topography. It's still a very flat field in conjunction with all this corn. But there, I mean, this is so isolated. You have to get here by boat. There's no trails getting in here. It's all public land, so you got to bushwhack. And if we can find anything on here that's any semblance of white oak or red oak um, or any of the subspecies, if we can find any bedding, this spot right here is priority number one. I'll guarantee you there are some monsters, for PA anyway, lurking around in here. So we're going to take you through. We're actually going to get some actual footage of this because this is the first like halfway decent thing we've got all, all, all uh, days today. Try to actually show you some actual sign in here if we can find any. All right, so we push back in here on this finger a little bit, and we're not getting into anything that's super impressive. We're just on trails. There's no oaks. It is all maples in here. Uh, just maple seedlings all over the forest floor. Uh, all of these trees are about the same age. Uh, there's some saplings in here, but this kind of tells I me mean, we have some older class trees, but a lot of them are, are the same age. Kind of indi indicative that they were logged all at one point or high graded at one point. But one thing we are seeing that's probably an indicator that the deer, even though this is so lush and so green, the water and everything, they are clearly struggling for food. Just take a look at this real quick. Every single one of these plants is browsed. Every single one. I'll try to get the focus a little bit better here. They are all browsed. They're just, this one, I mean, that's browsed off, browsed off, browsed off. Come up here, all this is browsed off. Uh, that's browsed off. I mean, it's just, they have gone through and absolutely decimated. I mean, look at, look at this. Just everything is just nipped off. Every single one of these plants. All the cat briar and everything has just been nipped off at some point in its lifespan. What that's telling me is that we have a lot of hungry deer out here. And probably, judging by the how difficult it is to get back in here, 
we have a lot of isolated deer and it, their herd numbers without natural predation have probably gotten pretty pretty high for the area now we haven't seen any tracks galore though and it's hard to come across deer in the summer um, if you don't kind of bump them off in their bedding area so lots of browse pressure lots of tracks lots of trails I think we have a high deer density in here it's just a matter of can we actually find a spot a tree stand spots galore but what actually do we want to key and focus on we're gonna see if we can find some oaks for that early season when the acorns drop I told you we'd eventually find something and we just found like the granddaddy of all red oaks He's probably about three and a half feet in diameter. So between walking through the corn and swatting mosquitoes, we're pretty stinking itchy. Speaking of one, I just killed one there, but we're gonna keep going, see if we can find more. Hopefully we can find some white oaks deeper back on this point. We're just seeing the browse everywhere. Everything in here is being browsed and there's not an acorn left over from last year from this red oak to speak of. So a lot, either a bunch of deer out here or uh, a little bit amount of food so Nate and I are gonna keep pushing in and see if we can find more it hasn't been a little bit of walking no well all right so we're here down here on what did you say we're about a third halfway up this 280 piece uh -huh. we're halfway up here we got to where we're kind of at the end of the corn this finger of corn comes up came up here and we're like yeah we got it and then Right about there-ish <laughs> is a guy's ladder stand. So, yay us. So, now we're on to plan D. And we're going to keep walking up here. We found a couple of red oaks sprinkled in the middle, but it was just so thick and just not an, ec just not an economical smart choice. So, keep you posted. Just a wee bit thick in here. Just a little bit thick as we traverse through the jungle here. I mean, take a take a gander at that. Nate's over there somewhere. <laughs> it's pretty pretty daggum thick. So it's been about a week since Nate and I went down to the islands to scout those out. And I want to show you on Onyx what I was looking at at the aerial image when I was here at the house before we made the trip down to the islands in the boat and show you what I wish I kind of had thought about and had the foresight to think about more before we went down. Now there's a lot of things with e-scouting that I do that really... <laughs> I have to do them before I get into the woods. I don't get a whole lot of time with the job and the two kids at the house, little ones, to get out and do a whole bunch of boots on the scouting, uh, boots on the ground scouting throughout the year. So doing the time on on X is really important for me. So I want to show you that last island in particular, the one where we had that little bit of open space right on the edge of the corn, and then as we push deeper, it got thicker and thicker. But I want to show you some of the things that I wish that I had thought about already. There are things I already knew, I just didn't put into practice until unfortunately we were already there on the islands had made the trip and taken the boats down and everything some stuff that I wish that I had thought about beforehand because it's stuff that applies to me here in the more mountainous area of Pennsylvania that I normally hunt and usually live in here obviously all right so let's take a look at the last island that we were on here and in terms of the topography if I go over to that topo there you see that Onyx doesn't recognize any different to topography whatsoever. You might have a little bit of the shaded area in terms of it being a little bit higher, but really there is just nothing. You see here actually on dry land, if you will, we actually have topography lines. Nothing here really recognizable on the island. You have this little area here, which if we see here uh, relates to this little finger that juts out. I like this hybrid mode. I can see some of the topo lines as well as the actual aerial image as well. Sometimes you don't get as many lines as just a straight topo, but as you can see over here, the topo lines are staying the same and then over here aside from this little knob right here of trees and this over here we don't have a whole lot of topography and that is something that I really focus on when it comes to e-scouting is the topography because in my neck of the woods here in Pennsylvania topography is everything topography creates the edges 
topography creates the funnels and the pinch points. Certain topo lines is where certain species of trees will live in terms of, you know, the red oaks, the white oaks, that sort of stuff, the actual food sources. So that's what I really was keying in on. And when we didn't have any topo, I was really kind of at a loss. So what I ended up having to do was look for the tree canopy, which is something I've kind of just gotten used to doing over time and seeing with the Onyx imagery where the shadows are, which I found out later that the shadows are actually way more important than I ever thought they would be and how thick it is. And we can see if I zoom in here, we have a lot of shadows as we creep back into here. So this area right here is what we could see there from that certain clip of the video. We could actually see through the timber, you know, 40, 50 yards maybe. We have a couple of pockets of shadows here, but it's nothing wild and crazy. And it did allow some undergrowth, but not nearly as thick as we'd seen in the past. And actually, if you want to see really how thick some of the other islands were in particular, follow the link in the description. Go over to Nate's channel the budget sportsman and look at his video he got some really good footage some of the thick stuff that we really were dealing with in about 99 percent of the spots that we ended up being at on this weekend trip so we have some of this area here at the initial part you can see his closed canopy and as soon as it gets back into here we have all these pockets of shadows and this creates that really thick undergrowth that we were fighting through just so so dense very wet very buggy couldn't see more than five to ten yards, let alone shoot when you actually get up a tree more than five to ten yards. Not really a good spot to be setting up in. The further we got up through here, we saw edges like this. This was uh, over here. It was like a big goldenrod cut, uh, about chest high uh, bedding cover of native brows and stuff. There was some brows in here. But again, these trees here with this sunlight coming into the forest here, you can see the shade. Um, of course, you know, we obviously have east over here. The sun is penetrating in here and it's real thick. Not really optimal to be hunting on the edge of this. So we kept bushwhacking our way through here and we got up to this edge, which is where we found that big red oak, that huge one that we got there earlier on camera. And you can see here, this is a scene or I like to call it a seam or an edge, right? You see the shadows, this is where it's thick, but then we have very few shadows or at least shadows that are much thinner. And that means we're getting less sunlight through the forest floor. And that's where Nate and I were walking and we found this red oak here. And that must mean that we are getting, or that red oak in particular is getting a lot of sunlight. It's absorbing a lot of the nutrients and it might be able to make a mass crop of acorns when the fall rolls around. So deer will most likely end up traveling this seam. They can jump in here for bedding they can jump in here for the green browse that's growing out of the forest floor but then you get in over here where there's fewer shadows and fewer sun uh, less sunlight getting to the forest floor you can get into that thicker canopy you might actually be able to get up a tree it actually uh, ironically it looks like the only place to get a tree stand right there would be that actual red oak itself uh, a lot of the other trees are a little bit small in diameter to get in a tree stand or my personal preference and Nate's personal preference a tethered phantom or a saddle getting in here is is going to be a little bit difficult because of the access and we'll talk about that in a second but this is a big example of an edge here a uh, very obvious edge this the sunlight coming through the shadows and allowing that big uh uh, bolt of undergrowth and over here more close canopy just like over here where we first walked into the timber much more open now there was only maples up here although we did see some deer sign and that's where I filmed that deer browse but clearly back in here we have much more of the uh, red oak and the hardwood and we might be able to catch a deer coming down along this edge here uh, we can't shoot that far that's way too far to be shooting with a bow and arrow with how thick it gets here again with the shadows but you might have deer that are coming down and swinging past this red oak out of this bedding area or coming out of this finger of corn here to go out into the main field of corn. They might swing past this red oak for a quick bite and you might be able to get a shot. Now, the only thing that I kind of regret is that we had walked up through here, finally gotten around all this thick stuff. And this is another example right here of kind of a uh, of an edge or a corner. You see here we have all this shadow here, and this was a nice little area we slipped through. I wish I'd used the uh, Onyx tracker to show you that, but this is another potential area of movement where we could actually get a tree stand in. Uh, again, access from the river is going to be difficult because of the typical southwest wind direction we get here in PA. We kind of blow out all of this uh, accessing from the river, but if we had a random uh, east wind or maybe a due south or a due north if we were trying to play with the deer up in here, who knows? Uh, but this might be another interesting thing as well. Now, when we did the last video clip uh, before uh, you know we ended this video, if you will, we were right in here at the end of the corn, and that guy's tree stand was somewhere over in here. We never made it to this more northern part 
of the island. And as you can see, it looks very similar to what we were already walking through. These bands of shadows, a lot of thick, but we kind of have running down this, this middle here, even though there is no topography to speak of, according to Onyx, and if we go with the hybrid mode, there is no topography to speak of. You can see we have a band of shadow, a band of shadow, and then right down the middle here is a little bit more close canopy. Now, granted, you can still see a lot of uh, it's not nearly as tight as I'm used to here uh, in the more north central big woods here of Pennsylvania. Uh, but you see that there's kind of this obvious band here, band here, and then down the middle it's a little bit more open. Maybe that would have been something we should have scouted. Uh, I'm not going to lie, I did have to twist Nate's arm a little bit to get us out of the woods. It had been a long day and we had a long drive ahead of us. And then also pushing out to this point, as you can see here, it might be a little more open in the understory. We have all these pockets here of the shadows of the sunlight, as well as actual like a pocket of green here. This might be like that goldenrod cut that we saw earlier um, down back in the, uh, in the corn. But then you can see as it gets towards the point here as well, it's going to be pretty thick in the undergrowth. We did not scout this. Could we have scouted it in particular this uh, this corner of the corn here where maybe deer are funneling out of that bedding area? I don't know. I also am still really hesitant about it because again, access is going to be very difficult. Uh, we had to kayak in there. The water levels were not high. Uh, it has not been a very wet summer and usually we do not have very wet falls here in PA. And so there was places out in the middle of the river in the kayaks it was only about a foot deep and that's not going to cut it with the John boat. Um, and I do not want to be hauling a deer out with a kayak. So, and also our boat launch was to the southwest, which means we'd have to come upstream, fight the current in order to get here. Again, not ideal when you're talking a kayak and you're talking a long, sweaty paddle. We're not coming out here in firearm season. We're not going to be coming out here during the peak of the rut. This is kind of an early season, kick it off the bucket list sort of thing. So, could we have scouted this up in here and seen if there was more deer trails? Potentially. Um, but what I really want to show you is what I'm kind of used to and why I was so taken aback when it comes to the actual scouting of this compared to what I'm usually used to scouting at home. And uh, I don't care if you know where it is because I haven't hunted it actually in a few years. Uh, but it's got some really obvious edges and some really obvious differences in terms of sunlight hitting the forest floor. And uh, actually, they've gone through and recently logged this. This looks totally different. I have no idea what it looks like now, but I saw last fall and winter they started to log it and they cleared out a lot of trees. So this is going to hunt very differently than it does now. So let's take a peek over here at Onyx and see what we're actually dealing with here. So here we're looking at an actual defined couple of edges and how this woods uh, plays out here. And you see that I already have some marks here where I sat here uh, in an original sit in a tree stand. And then here's an access point that I've marked with purple because there's actually a humongous deer trail right here. And this is what I'm more used to seeing. So over here across the, this is a big ATV road, although you can't actually ride ATVs on it. It's for the game commission officers only. So it's a pretty easy walking or biking path. You see over here we have a lot of that pocket of shadow. Uh, you get a lot of evergreens over here and this allows for a lot of sunlight to hit the floor's floor and it's real thick. But if you look over here, you see it's much more closed canopy. It's not nearly as dark, you know, that, that's, that mottled look over here. And this is a huge white oak ridge uh, that runs the whole length of this, several, several hundred yards uh, across the top of this topo line here. You can see this hard topo line and this one, it gets pretty flat up in here before it keeps pitching over. So when you have this road, that is one hard edge, and then you have this big deciduous, uh, really closed canopy. It's a lot of fern, undergrowth, no food, so it's all based on the white oaks and the red oaks that are in there. Then you have this guy right here, and it's really kind of hard to tell unless you know what you're looking for. But you can see these are obvious big top deciduous trees, but then you have big top deciduous trees over here. But then this light colored stuff is to my eye obviously a low cut undergrowth uh, and when I actually get in there it turns out to be a lot of autumn olive uh, a lot of cat briar a lot of privet type stuff so I can see big deciduous here I can see the shadows being cast off of the tall trees as you know the sun is obviously in the west in this image being cast onto these smaller shrubs and trees. I know this is lower undergrowth, and I can tell by it all being kind of the same color that this is a much lower patch, and this could be bedding, 
Uh, this could be just types of native browns, but we have this hard edge here coming down. We have this hard edge coming here, coming down, and then this obvious human-made edge here. And this right here is a cattle path of a deer trail where deer are coming around or out of this bedding area coming into the easiest access point because when you have a closed canopy forest and you don't have a lot of sunlight hitting the forest floor, it's very open, very easy access of walking for deer, for turkeys, for humans, of course. And so this is a huge trail that they then use to access the other side and then there's a, a litany of different directions they can go. But this is an example of an edge that I was kind of hoping we would find that was very well defined and obvious from an aerial image and it's just not. Now this road is cheating a little bit, so let's go over and actually look over at a non-road area. And this is again the same idea of, uh, this is where I shot my buck back in 2018. Uh, made a bad shot and I had to go in and find him. I actually tracked him down to here and then I ended up finding him. This is a creek uh, that runs down along the basin and he died right on the point uh, in his bed down here. So by using that track I was actually able to find him by just walking down the creek bed uh, from that access road all the way down there and found him uh, right there in his bed. But anyhow, let's go back to what I'm talking about with this edge that I was kind of hoping to see because I'm used to hunting these creek bottom type things um, that have these really defined edges too and I was kind of hoping we'd see that with the river and we just didn't. So here again, you can see this kind of uh, square, you know, diamond shaped here. Obvious, we have shadows again from the sunlight, you know, casting across from this west to east look. Um, and these are obviously some deciduous hardwoods on the outside. And then on the inside, you have this big autumn olive privet, you know, shoulder high, uh, head high stuff for me. And the deer are clearly going to bed in it. It's really easy to see from the trails that come in and out. And this is why I ended up on this tree stand location right here. So the reason why I ended up here was during the rut. I knew that if we had a south wind of any sort, that if they were going to be does bedded in here, the bucks were going to cruise this backside to scent check this bedding area. And sure enough, he came right up out of this, uh, this is a big evergreen uh, uh, row of trees here that overlooks this creek bottom. And he sure enough, he came right up out of there, probably going up to scent check this bedding area, this obvious defined edge here. And I shot him there at about 15 yards. And if I'd made a better shot, the hunt would have gone a lot smoother, uh, but I made a poor shot and that's what caused it to happen the next day. But not only that, you can see from the topo lines, and this is come again from where I'm used to seeing topography creating the edge. You can see this topo line here right before it gets flat. This is an obvious flat right here. I'm right on the top of that topo line. This red mark is my tree stand. And so right here is where I was actually set up. He came right up and was able to hit this topo line and then he was gonna come right across this flat. Now he could have come out here and gone through the hardwoods to scent check, but it made more sense for him to follow this edge come up with this edge and then right there around on the north side following we had about a south to a southeast wind that night and it just played perfectly that he came right up out of the creek bottom potentially out of his bed maybe he was sent checking the creek bottom right at last light came right past me and i was able to uh, make the shot now this is what again i am used to seeing this hardwood transition the deciduous uh, uh, trees these taller uh, more closed canopy into this thicker stuff and this is the type of hardwoods and transitions that I'm looking for. When, if this was an ag field, that changes the game. That totally changes the game because this really right now, uh, during the hunting season, when everything is kind of in the dying off process, they are focused on the acorns and the deciduous hardwoods, and this down here is all bedding. That is what that is used for. And so they're only in here to bed. They're not really in there to eat as much because during the fall, stuff is starting to become less palatable. It's uh, starting to become less nutritious as it starts to brown off and die. It's a lot of woody stem stuff, and they won't really start to touch that until it gets to that late winter time when they're kind of stressed for food sources and they kind of resort to that. But if acorns are falling or if there's other green undergrowth, uh, out in the hardwoods here, they're going to go after that. And also too, down here in this creek bottom, same thing here, if they get some lush greenery, doesn't frost over nearly as quickly because of the warmer temperatures uh, being out of the frost, if you will, uh, they'll, they'll spend a lot of time down in there as well, and I'm used to that. When I got down into the river system and it's all the same topography and the edges are based off that ag field and the edges are based off of just sunlight getting to the forest floor within the deciduous hardwoods, I really struggled to understand that. And so that's what kind of caused some problems. Will I go back in there with Nate to hunt? 
that's up to him. Uh, I think we could go in there and try to shoot a dome, particularly on that point. We'll have to find out. But um, that's all for this video. Uh, I know it's kind of a rambler and it's a little bit lengthy, uh, but this I kind of want to be the start of an Onyx hunt mapping series, e-scouting, boots on the ground scouting, what I'm actually looking for, pinch points, funnels, terrain, vegetation, food sources, so on and so forth. So if you're interested in that, leave a comment in the description below saying yay or nay. And otherwise, get outside, enjoy the sport of archery, archery hunting if you so choose, definitely enjoy God's beautiful creation, and we'll get to see you next time.